Had love with Pat's two cents. Listen, why are you so ugly? Hmm. And did you know God don't like ugly? Hmm. Do you like ugly? Well, how about acting ugly? Talking ugly? Being ugly? What's the fun in that? You answer me. Stand in the mirror. Ask yourself those questions. Because there seems to be an epidemic of drama queens and drama kings spreading all over this earth. You like slapping somebody upside their head? Whoa, Nelly. You like cussing folks out? Because you just got that mouth. And everybody's got to hear your big mouth talk loud while you saying nothing. What is so exciting about that? What is so exciting about you telling people off, giving them a piece of your mind? Do you have a mind? You might need to keep every piece you got. I don't understand the point. I don't understand where does the joy come from that makes you want to hurt and crush and belittle and make fun of. Where does that come from? It sounds a little satanic to me. What do you think? You think you're being moved by the devil? You might be sitting on the devil's lap playing his little mannequin. And every time the devil wants to say something ugly, he knows he can move your big mouth. Is that the way you want your life to be? Is that what you want to be known as? The ugly person that nobody wants to be around. Because you talk ugly, you act ugly, your ears ugly. Is that the way you want it? Well, it must be. You cuss like a sailor. You act like a fool. And then you want people to like you. Hello? You don't understand why people don't love you the way you think you deserve to be loved. Come on now. I just brought that up for you to think about. Because when people see you coming, sometimes your kids, some of them are your relatives, and some of them used to be your ace boom coon. But they run. You come one way, they run the other. And then you can't figure out why somebody wants to leave you all the time. Why are you always having broken relationships? You told them you love them after you wiped the floor with their behinds. Well, they ought to understand, right? You did tell them you loved them and you're so sorry and you cried crocodile tears, didn't you? But you forget that right before then, you blamed them for your ugly disposition. And you blamed them because you forgot to pay a bill and the lights got turned off. And you blame them because you can't function sexually. So you've got to put all the blame on them so that the smaller they feel, the bigger you feel. You just get all full of yourself after you've put them down and made them cry. Ain't that ugly? Don't you think? It's just teeny weeny bit ugly. Yes, it's very ugly. And if you think God is pleased with you, you got another thing coming, baby. Now, you know who I'm looking at right now? Some of you pastors in the pulpit. Oh, no. Oh, yes. And some of you are people with affluence, with money, honey. And you have servants and butlers and all kind of drivers. And I mean, you have the big uh, business. You are the big CEO or the president of the company or the founder. Very affluent. Oh, yes. But you don't know how ugly you are. People don't call you by your name 
behind your back. They call you the B word or they call you an SOB. And you think that because they show you false respect in your face that they have respect for you. High respect. Yes, because you have it like that and you have the pedigree. You've earned all of this respect. No, not when you're treating people like a dog. Not when you talk down to people and you patronize them and you disrespect them and you make fun of them and belittle them in front of your other staff. No, you are an ugly duckling and you need God to beautify you because you are so ugly you are about to implode. Look that up in the dictionary in case your affluent, intelligent mind doesn't know what that means. You are about to self-destruct, and you are the last one to know it. You stink, buddy. Stop it. You need to operate in love. Love. Love is beautiful. Love is kind. Love is patient. Love is merciful. Love is respectful. Love is considerate of other people's feelings. And love does not think so highly of oneself because love prefers to lift others up even when they're not doing that well. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Read that love chapter. If the words can burrow down in your spirit and the Holy Spirit can cleanse you of all your drama, you might end up being beautified. God can give you beauty for your ashes. You've been sprinkling your ashes around long enough. Stop sprinkling them on everybody. Stop pouring them all over the desks. Stop blowing them in the air, fouling up the atmosphere, and give your ashes to Jesus. He will give you his beauty. Try it. You might even like.